You're saying no corruption? No. None? No. There were some, there were some boneheaded decisions. Boneheaded out decisions. Of, out of a but local no office. mass corruption. Not even mass corruption. Not even a smidgen of corruption, obviously. Okay. Not even a smidgen of corruption. Now, that's what President Obama told Bill O'Reilly about the IRS targeting scandal. And today, House Republicans grilling the new IRS chief about the president's comment. So if I hear your answer correctly, then you would be of the opinion that there is no way to come to a conclusion at this point in time, the way you're testifying before us, that there is no smidgen of corruption in the tea targeting uh, my situation, because the has, investigations have not been complete. My position has been that everybody's entitled to their perspective on the evidence as it's unfolded. And I appreciate heard, that. So I'm asking, what is your I do not have an opinion. I'm not expressing opinion on Chairman Camp's view, on Chairman Bristani's view, or anybody else's view. I am telling you, I am here to run this organization. I'm going to run it in a view? straight, fair way. And whatever comments anybody is making are their business, and it's up to them. And I'm not going to go around second-guessing comments by anyone. And after his first congressional appearance since taking charge of the IRS, the commissioner going on the record for his first national TV interview. Griff Jenkins of Fox News, congratulations on the job. Thank you, thank you. What, uh, how confident are you that you can restore the public's trust in the IRS? Well, first I think the public will make a decision as whether I look like I mean it. Uh, but ultimately, as I said at the hearing, the proof will be in the pudding. I think people need to, over time, uh, be comfortable that we are working with taxpayers, uh, trying to help them file their returns efficiently and uh, on time and for the right amount. Uh, and that our goal really is to treat everyone fairly, that you should be confident that when you call the IRS for help, you're going to get it, no matter who you are, that if you hear from the IRS, you're hearing from us uh, on a, an independent of who you voted for in the last election, what political group you belong to. Uh, and I think if we can continue to get that message out and get people to actually see the results that way, uh, we'll do all right. But again, people have to understand there are, we are auditing people. We are uh, uh, pursuing uh, tax uh, collections. And so the fact that you get audited, I hope over time you'll understand, has nothing to do with your political affiliation or any organization you belong to. With the uh, reinstating the performance awards, some people see them as a bonus, uh, the right first step, I guess uh, you're getting a, uh, coming right into office and already people are criticizing that, that decision. Well, <clears throat> as I said, you have to understand these are people who haven't gotten a pay raise in four years. We were in the middle of litigation with the union because we had not paid those uh, bonuses as re uh, performance awards as required under the contract. Uh, last year because of the financial constraints. Uh, so we had an unfair labor practice and a, a grievance and a lawsuit pending seeking uh, performance awards of 1.75. We're negotiating a new contract with the union and in the course of that uh, we're able to settle all of that background litigation uh, paying uh, significantly less than the contract required. They agreed they would take the 1% uh, as we go forward. I think it is an important signal to employees uh, that we value their contributions. Not everyone will get a performance award. We expect 30 or 40 percent won't. These are determinations made by management uh, as we go forward. Uh, but we depend upon employees to actually uh, perform. And as I say, they haven't had a pay raise in four years. Uh, and I thought on balance, particularly in terms of reaching an agreement with the union, it was the right decision. And lastly, if I could just ask you, is there something you would want to say directly to those that were targeted that uh, the, the IRS's problems certainly go back to this targeting of conservative groups? Is there something you do want to say to those actual individuals? Well, I've always felt that we have backlogs in a lot of ways, uh, that, but particularly here, if the selection criteria were inappropriate uh, and then people were uh, selected for review or delayed in their ability to get a response because of their organization's name, uh, that's intolerable. We're not going to do that. It doesn't happen now. It won't happen going forward. And to the extent that people uh, suffered accordingly, I apologize for that. I think that that uh, is not the way the IRS functions as a general matter, and it's certainly not the way we're going to function going forward. Thank you, Mr. Commissioner. So does, does the Tea Party accept the IRS chief's apology? The Tea Party Patriots, Jenny Beth Martin, joins us. Nice to see you, Jenny Beth. Good to see you, Greta. So um, the new commissioner says that he apologizes. Do you accept that? No, I don't accept it. Greta, we still, over three years later, do not have the determination from the IRS for a 501c3 or a 501c4 organization. They continue to this day to target conservative groups like mine. What is the last you've heard from them? I mean, is there a volley of, of exchange of, of emails, of phone calls? Are they, are they just playing or gaming you? 
the last we've we had um, letters from them asking for more information towards the end of last year our legal counsel has been in, in touch with the IRS they said there's some new tri-level review process that's going on I guess the tri-level review process is supposed to match the three years the tri-year process it's taking for us to get our determination it's it's still ongoing I don't even know what the new tri-level review process is you know, it's interesting listening to him. I mean, I, I, I wonder if he knows that you still haven't gotten an answer, which, by the way, I think no answer is worse than an answer, because if you get an adverse answer, at least you can go through the appellate procedure. I think the far more oppressive and cruel thing is the no answer. I think that's actually, you know, where the IRS gets really rotten and dirty. Um, but I, I wonder, do you think he even knows about uh, your problem? Well, if I knew that the agency I was in charge of had treated American citizens the way the IRS has treated members of groups like mine, I would make sure it was my top priority to know what they were doing and how it was being corrected. And I would check that every single day. If he's not doing that, he's not doing his job. And Greta, the thing is, all these things that have happened to Tea Party patriots and groups with Tea Party and patriots in their name over the last three and four years, the IRS has new regulations that they're proposing that will make this permanent, that will make it into law. And part of those regulations are going to prevent us from even listing activity like members of Congress voting record 30 days before an election. The election in Texas for the primary is we're 30 days out from that tomorrow, 30 days <laughs> out. And the debt ceiling vote is coming up in the next 30 days. They'd make us take all that information off our website. They're trying. They have have silent citizens and they're trying to make that be permanent. All right, let me ask you a quick question. I got to go. President Obama said there's not a smidgen of uh, evidence. Um, what, do you, what do you say to the president? What, what can you expect from a politician from Chicago? He, how can he say there's not a smidgen of corruption when groups like ours, the inspector general has said that groups with Tea Party and Patriots were 100 percent targeted? All right. Well, I will defend Chicago. There are a lot of good politicians out there. I mean, I, I know you, might, you could have a beef with the president, but, uh, you know, uh, uh, I'll have everybody from Chicago emailing me if I don't. Anyway, Jenny, Beth, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Greta. Always good to be here.